It's been a month since I had done this video. Um, well, not only that, I've been getting a lot of support lately. Like, crazy amount of support. 200 subscribers in the last two weeks. You guys are insane, and I really appreciate that. This is way too much for me to handle, especially right now, because, you know, I have a lot of stuff to do. I promise I would do something once I hit a thousand subscribers. I don't know what it will be. Um, I haven't planned anything. I never expected to get this popular. Anyways, enough of my rambling. I tried making a tutorial. I recorded hours and hours of video trying to explain how to set it up what graphics to use, how the screen works, etc. There's a lot to take in, um, but for now, I'll just explain how the game works. You read the title, I'll explain how T-POM works. I'll split the video into two parts, the gameplay and the server side mechanics. Let's get started. A lot of people are curious how the songs work in the game, so I will try to explain it to the best of my ability. The opponents and players' mappings are actually generated from mini files. Mini files contain a timed sequence of notes, as of a piano. This is perfect for our situation as each note correlates to an arrow. This pattern repeats for every four notes. The game completely ignores the length of each note in the MIDI file and only cares about when the notes come out and at what pitch, so we only have tap notes. The reason why the game didn't have hold notes was because it would ruin the balance of the game. A lot of people are already complaining about how hard the game is, and at the time, because the community event was going on, implementing hold notes would be tedious and will only hurt the playability and the reputation of the game. The pitch is important because the characters' voices actually have to play these notes, which it does on the fly. That's how the game can handle levels of endless combinations of characters. The MIDI files were actually converted into text for Hyperpad to read, so it looks like this. Hyperpad doesn't actually use MIDI files, so um, I just use text instead. The game can only show a limited amount of arrows, and any more will make the game laggy and unplayable, so it only renders the notes that will be on screen by spawning and destroying them. Disclaimer though, the game doesn't actually destroy or spawn any objects. It uses a technique known as object pulling. Instead of having to instantiate new notes when needed, which could be laggy if a lot is done at once, the game recycles note objects to save performance. Notes move in and out of the screen. When a note isn't active, it will hide out of bounds where it can't be seen. During a song, every frame, the game is getting the current timestamp of the music playing. This timestamp is compared to notes from both MIDI files from both sides, and if the timestamp surpasses either of the starting timestamp of the newest notes that haven't spawned yet, then it will spawn a note. You would realize that the notes spawn before the game has to play the note. The time it takes for the arrow to move from the bottom of the screen to the arrows is accounted for. There are custom graphical events and some levels that sync with the music. I actually pre-record the events and then put it in the game for it to play back. The game takes in a BPM and a dictionary containing timestamps and what events to play in those timestamps. Okay, get ready for some math. You can skip this part if you are allergic to math. I will give a couple seconds for you guys to do that. I know some of you guys are allergic to math. You guys hate math, then please skip this part. I advise you to skip this part if you really hate math. 60 divided by the BPM will return the length of each beat. Oh yeah, in seconds. This is the delay between the camera zooming in and out. A mini file uses a different unit of time. Instead of seconds, it uses ticks. FL Studio Mobile exports MIDIs with 128 ticks per beat. Different music production software can export MIDI with a different tick speed. All the music I remixed for the game was remixed in FL Studio Mobile. So I will use 128 ticks per beat in the explanation. I will refer this variable as tick speed. There is a variable called current time that gets the current timestamp of the song playing in seconds. There is another variable called note duration that determines how long it takes for a note to move from the bottom of the screen to the gray arrows in seconds. Yes, the units are important. 
TPOM uses a math equation to calculate a new variable called search timestamp. 60 is divided by BPM, then multiplied by tick speed. This product is multiplied by the sum of note duration and current time. This formula yields the current timestamp where the game will need to search for notes in the MIDI to spawn in ticks. Remember, the MIDI file uses a different unit of time. Ticks, not seconds. Search timestamp is compared to the note timestamps in the MIDI files and from there will spawn notes accordingly. Like I already mentioned before, the notes spawn before they are actually played to give time for them to be on screen. Okay, that's enough math for today. Um, for those who are allergic to math, you can come back now, we're safe. We're safe, there's no more, I promise. When the notes have completed their translation to the gray arrows, it will check which side it is on. If it is on the left side, then it can just disappear, like it was on autoplay. Otherwise, if it was on the right side, after a short delay, it will check if the note has been hit. If it has not been hit, it will deduct health from the player and play a missing sound. When you type any of the arrows, it will check for all the arrows of that type. It will only consider the nearest arrow within a short range. If there are no notes within that range, it will deduct the player's health and play a missing sound. Otherwise, if there is a note in this range, it will check how close the note is to the gray arrow and calculate feedback as accordingly. The closer the note is to the gray arrow, the higher score you will get, and vice versa. We have moved on to server-side mechanics. Socket.io is an API that allows Hyperpad to connect to a server that also supports Socket.io and perform real-time communication, which allows real-time multiplayer and cross-platform interaction to be possible. The TPOM server has a database. A database stores information. The TPOM servers just store player data. Each player has a unique ID, and this ID correlates to a whole set of data containing statistics, current activity, and high scores. Every 10 minutes, the server backs up the newest data to Google Firebase's real-time database. This converts to 144 backups each day and 4,320 every month. If anything happens to the server, like it crashes or encounters an error, then it can always take the latest backup that it has, which can only be up to 10 minutes earlier. That's pretty much it for this section. I don't want to give any more details to give hackers any ideas. So I'm moving on. That's it. Now, for someone to store and access their own data from the database, they must be logged in. Now, instead of creating a simple username and password system, I decided to use Discord for registration. This provided a couple benefits over having a username password system. You do not need to provide any account details, no passwords or username needed. The system served as anti-spam as users needed to have Discord and have a verified email. This also made it nearly impossible for someone to get access on someone else's account. Players can verify who they are and we can send rewards to their Discord. This was perfect because TPOM was originally a Discord community event. Players with the best scores got gift cards, access codes, and other prizes. Of course, it got extremely popular, so I made it a full-fledged game on its own. Have fun. Once you are logged in, your Discord account is tied to your TPOM account. And every time you log in with your Discord account, you are always logged in with your own TPOM account. Now, I'm not going to explain how that works because I don't want to give malicious hackers any ideas. Every time you complete a level, your final score and accuracy are calculated and are sent to the server. The game records your combos and timing and that is sent to the server for the server to verify. The server checks if the provided score is greater than the player's high score on that level. If it is, then it will set the new high score. Now, uh, multiplayer is a little more complicated. A player can send a message to the server to create a room. Once a room is created, the player can interact with the menus, which will send more data to the server. The data sent to the server will be sent back to the players in the room, which can only be the host and another player. 
Only two players can join one room. The server prevents any more players from joining and the match can start. During gameplay, players are constantly sending data to the server like when you miss, when you hit a note, and how accurate your timings are. The health bar at the bottom is controlled by the server so it should appear the same on both of the player's screens. Once the song ends, both players send a confirmation packet saying their song is complete and announcing their final score. The server sends out a result and whoever got a better score won that match. The server keeps track of how many multiplayer wins someone has. For every victory, this number increases by 1. If you have seen the T-Pom community discord, you'll see that the game likes to send out these announcements in this channel. This happens on the server side, so players can't just send whatever they want. Every time one of these events occur, the T-Pom server sends an HTTP request to the discord servers, and discord tells this discord bot to send a specified message. The contents of the messages contain numerous things, such as banner color, URL, title, author name, body message, images, and many more. These attributes can determine how the message looks and how it works. There are other videos on YouTube that go more into detail about Discord embed messages and APIs if you would like to know more. Every level contains its own leaderboard, and there is a global leaderboard that combines all the scores together. Only the best scores or high scores are accounted for in all leaderboards. Every time a player requests to see a leaderboard, the server always calculates the rankings so that the player will always get the latest information. The server loops to every single player that has completed the specified level and sorts the scores from greatest to lowest. In a global leaderboard, the server iterates to every single player through every single level and adds all the high scores together, then sorts the high scores from greatest to lowest. Okay, back to Socket.io. Call this a part 2. Socket.io uses JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language. Socket.io is event-based just like Hyperpad. When this happens, then that. The TPOM Socket.io server contains just events. 100% events. There's no crazy magic going on. All of these events are like, when, when I, I receive this from the player, then I will do this. Way. Let's take a look at an example. When a player sends the event update name, the server checks if the player's account exists. If the account does not exist, the server will send back an error back to the player. The server will perform checks to see if the player is logged in and if the length of the name they provided is too long or too short. After meeting the following criteria, the player's name has been changed and the server sends back a success message that states that the player has changed their name. That is everything for this video. If you still have questions, you can ask me in the comments or in the Discord. I am much more active in the Discord server, so it will be a better way to communicate with me if you have burning questions. Anyways, that will be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. See you later! This disclaimer though, the game doesn't actually- oh gosh. The <laughs> speak, Arik, speak. Disclaimer though, the game doesn't actually spawn or destroy any objects. It uses a technique. <sighs> oh, it, I'm okay. I didn't choke. <laughs> I, I just can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The script is so freaking long. Oh my god. I'm not even halfway there. <laughs> I did this to myself. I wrote the script. I, I do everything on my channel. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm looking at the edited footage of this and it's freaking 14 minutes long. This is gonna be the longest video on my channel. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is gonna be the longest video where I talk for 14 minutes. Wait, why is this still recording? Bye. I said bye.